Come on. Very good morning to all. Uh, this is Dr. Dinagaran, uh, professor from Chennai Institute of Technology, Chennai. It is my great pleasure to welcome you all for the wonderful webinar on uh, fundamentals of fine trimmer analysis. So we have huge participants from all over India, and not only from India, we got participants from Taiwan and Vietnam and USA too. So I thank all the participants to be with us. Uh, let me introduce our chairman, Honorable Sri P. Sriram, who is one of the high motivator and helping us to conduct these type of programs. And I welcome Dr. N. Sivashanmugam, professor from Chennai University of Technology. And I am very proud to say I am his student. And now I invite our chairman sir to say a few words about this workshop and our institute. Please, sir. Good morning. First of all, let me thank and congratulate Dr. Dinagar, Associate Professor, Chennai Institute of Technology, for organizing this program. And also, I thank uh, Dr. N. Sivasubramaniam. Thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us. Uh, this uh, challenging time you are with us. And uh, uh, when uh, we talk about N. Sivasubramaniam, sir, he has a lot of experience in uh, teaching as well as uh, in research and development activities, especially finite element analysis. He has strong knowledge. That's why we invited him. I'm sure all the participants who are participating today in this webinar, definitely you will gain a lot of knowledge, his wisdom also. Thank you for being with us. And also I thank all the participants from various uh, universities, engineering colleges, not only from India and other countries also. So thank you for your presence. We are in a very challenging time. Whenever we have these kind of challenges, uh, as a human beings, we are uh, overcoming. In the past, we have faced uh, similar situations. This in our uh, life, we are seeing. It's, it's uh, unbelievable. We never thought, uh, even three, four months before, we never thought this kind of situations. And I wish all, all of you be safe. And uh, for that, I wish, I, I also pray the God Almighty for your well being. Now, about this webinar on fundamentals of uh, finite element analysis in engineering and technology field, the fundamentals are very important. Nowadays, we have a tendency as well as uh, as well as well uh, educators and uh, the students and the research also, we are not more foc giving more focus on fundamentals, not only this finite, ele finite element analysis in any area. So that is very important. Without fundamentals, you cannot do your research. We need to understand the basic principles of engineering, principles of each and every activities in domain. Uh, uh, in that sense, this program definitely will be very useful. You name it. I'm also a mechanical engineer and running automotive component manufacturing plant in India. And we also manufacturing and uh, we also developing a lot of new products. Say now, nowadays, there are a lot of challenges are there. As you all are aware, electric vehicles are uh, even in India 2030, it's going to play a vital role. And when we develop newer vehicles, when we wanted to have a fuel economy and cost reductions and to make this world a better place to live by reducing our consumption of natural resources, for that uh, finite element analysis plays very, 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 very important role. All engineers, you are all must not only researcher, even undergraduate level also, if you wanted to work in the manufacturing also, if you wanted to work, definitely you must understand this finite element analysis. I'm, I'm uh, as a component manufacturer, uh, we are producing uh, aluminum die casting components and coal forging components. We also do a lot of heat treatment process. So our challenge is in especially in die casting. Now everything is changing. We have huge capacity available. The part whatever manufacturing through our die casting facilities, the undergoing unbelievable kind of design changes and some newer material also we are using. Especially in die casting, aluminum die castings. Earlier, most of the vehicles in uh, uh, sports vehicles, motorcycle or car, they were using structural parts also, aluminum alloys they were using. But nowadays, all automobile, you name any 
Indian manufacturer to well uh, the uh, global manufacturer. They are uh, planning to. They are already started using structural part also with the die casting. So those kind of parts also the finite element analysis plays very important role because they have a, under tremendous pressure to reduce the weight and also same times they wanted to improve the performance in terms of uh, pollution. Whenever pollution happens, they, they, because as you all aware. We are worried about uh, around 200,000 people's lives lost in this pandemic. But every year in India alone, we are losing around 200,000 people because of road accidents. So that kind of a robustness also we need to build in vehicle. For this, uh, I can uh, talk so much. Uh, there are a lot of uh, the, the, even material sciences uh, in uh, nanotechnology related area and uh, automobile, aerospace, uh, construction, and uh, oil and gas industry, you name any area, the uh, finite element analysis plays very important role to improve their efficiency and uh, make this world very safer and uh, reduce the consumption of uh, natural resources available. So I don't want to take much time with these few words. Once again, I congratulate uh, Dr. Dinagar and I thank uh, Dr. Sivasubramaniam sir, and also I congratulate and thank all the participants for this webinar, and I wish big success for this program. Thank you. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, please, you can start, sir. Uh, okay. Very good morning to one and all present here. Before entering into my uh, presentation on final element analysis, I want to thank Chennai Institute of Technology, especially Chairman of Chennai Institute of Technology, uh, to providing me an opportunity to share my little bit of experience on finite element analysis to this uh, forum. Uh, and I also thank uh, my student, Dr. Dindagaran, for providing me an opportunity uh, to create this wonderful webinar, web based seminar. It is highly useful in this uh, pathetic condition. Uh, let us get into this uh, finite element analysis. Before getting into that, uh, uh, we want to thank our doctors, nurses who are looking after our uh, colleagues, uh, friends, uh, uh, known people, unknown people for this worst condition. First, uh, I want to thank from my bottom of the heart to thank the doc uh, doctors, who, uh, nurses, and everyone who is looking after our. Uh, uh, health in and around of India in all over the world. So let us get into the finite element analysis. I think uh, you can see the title slide. Yes, the yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go. Uh, fundamentals of finite element method. I'm myself, uh, Dr. N. Suvesh Anmuram, Associate Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, National Institute of Technology, Trichrapalli. And uh, my email ID is available here. Uh, if you want any queries related to this webinar or if you want to do something on ANSYS Abacus Council, you put a mail, write something to me. I am very much interested to reply to your mail, and mobile number is also available here. So what is the need of finite element method? So it is a very, very important numerical technique. What is the need of finite element method? That is a million dollar question. So the thing is, the best way to solve any problem governed by any physical problem governed by a differential equation is to get the, is to obtain the analytical solution, correct? So any problem, for example, if you take a heat conduction, so what is the equation? What is the governing differential equation for heat conduction in a rod? Q is equal to minus Ka dt by dx. Where K is the thermal conductivity of the material, A is the area of the cross section, and dt by dx is the temperature gradient, where Q is the heated point. So this is the governing differential equation. What is the use? If you want to give the if you want to apply the boundary conditions to the governing equation, the final thing you can get the analytical solution. Either you can uh, find out the Q. Or Q is available if you want to find out the temperature gradient, that is also available. But there are some situations where analytical solution is very difficult to obtain. What is a difficult situation, sir? Sir, difficult situation means you are unable to 
define the problem mathematically. So, the, for example, I already we already discussed that uh, heat conduction in a rod where Q is equal to minus Ka dt by dx. But this is the governing differential equation for the particular problem. But there are some problem where it is highly difficult to define the problem mathematically. Situations are that. What are the situation? So, first situation, if the domain is irregular. For example, if you take a heat conduction in a rod, it is of uniform cross section. That's why you are using that word A. A means it is a uniform cross section. It may be a circular cross section or a triangular or a rectangle, whatever may be the thing. But when the domain is of irregular, it is highly difficult to define the problem mathematically. See, I'm using the pointer here. If the domain is something like this, if you are using this domain, it is very difficult to define the domain mathematically. In that situation, we want to find out the solution for this problem. First situation. The second situation, sir, my problem, that is that my domain is having different materials, sir. This is of aluminium, this is of copper, and this is of uh, titanium. So it contains different materials. In that situation, it is defined the problem mathematically, mathematically is cumbersome. So it is highly difficult to define the problem. The second situation is, if the domain consists of more than two different materials, then we want to find out the solution of the problem or mathematically define the problem is cumbersome. See, the same example minus k dt by dx, where k is nothing but the thermal conductivity of the material. So thermal conductivity means if it is a steel, then the thermal conductivity is known. But if it is a combination of a material, it is very difficult to define the problem mathematically. That is the second situation. What happened to the third situation? Third situation where you know something about isotropic, orthotropic. I think if you could remember the people who is the faculty member who teach uh, uh, something on strength of material, as soon as he entered in the first class and if he's derived a lot of equation in strength of material like uh, uh, theory of simple bending, uh, like Lamy's equations, Mohr circle, etc., etc., we, we are we assumed so many things. Otherwise, it is very difficult to derive all those equations. Correct. So, in that case, what is that first assumption we have to assume to derive all those equations? Like we have T by J is equal to C theta by L is equal to tau by R and F by I is equal to F is divided by R. So that these are all the moment, uh, bending moment equations and your torsion equation. So these equations are derived with the assumption in such a way that, sir, the material behavior is isotropic and homogeneous in nature. Sir, if you could consider not even a single material in this world is homogeneous. So, are the isotropic. So, we assumed in such a way that the material behavior is isotropic. So, the third condition, first situation is if the domain is irregular, the second situation if it contains more than two different materials or different materials, the third situation if the material property is of anisotropy, if the condition stating that if it is of anisotropy, it is very defined, it is very difficult to define the problem mathematically. Correct? Three situations are that. First one is of irregular domain. Second one is of uh, different materials. Third one is of anisotropy. You know something about isotropy. So in all direction, the material property is uniform. Orthotropy, perpendicular direction, it x is different from y, y is different from z. But when you go for anisotropy, the behavior is totally different throughout the material, throughout the volume. In such cases, it is very difficult to do, define the problem mathematically. So then the condition, what is it? You need some solution for this type of a problem, correct? So if a domain is irregular, then you need solution for the problem, but it is very difficult to define the problem mathematically, sir. And my domain is irregular, sir, but it contains different material. In such case also, it is difficult to define the problem mathematically. So the third case, what we are asking about is the uh, I said anisotropy. So in that condition also, it is very difficult to define the problem mathematically. So as far as the thing is concerned, in English there is a power, uh, something is better than nothing. 
so we need some sort of solution that solution may not be exact solution of the problem it may be the approximate solution of the problem why it is an approximate solution we are going to utilize some approximation technique what do you mean by the approximation technique that is something under numerical methods that that's why these techniques are coming under these are grouping under the headings of numerical methods clear what is a numerical methods it is only an approximation technique so when you are using this approximation technique you are getting only the approximating solution so what is a numerical methods i think you are familiar with that uh, uh, third semester or fourth semester mathematics that is a numerical methods what is a numerical methods uh, numerical methods we have gas jordan gas edel gas elimination so many techniques are there if you could remember in olden days that uh, the person who is teaching that numerical method he asked you to take that to do in terms of iterations take the previous thing and put it in the current step so you have to stop until you are getting the refinement of 0.000 a triple zero or four uh, four zeros five times zeros then you have to stop the iteration like that it is like a iterative process by using this numerical method by with the type of iterations you can find out the approximate solution of the problem okay well. so with this approximation technique you are getting only the approximate solution okay sir why it is called approximating solution sir when you are going for this uh, numerical methods i want to highlight one small example in that why it is called approximating solution because you are using only approximation technique what is approximation technique this numerical methods what are all numerical methods what are the techniques available in this world to get the exact approximate solution for the problem first one we have finite difference method finite volume method third one boundary element method fourth one finite element method fifth uh, we have so many things are there extended finite element method lot and lot of things are there sir what is that in the finite difference method sir this finite difference method holds good for the fluid flow problem why sir why sir the 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 basics behind the finite difference method it is working on difference equation it approximate the differential equation with the help of difference equation what do you mean by the difference equation sir i'll show one slide pertaining to this finite difference method sir what is it uh, difference equations we can use uh, forward difference equation backward difference and central difference why is it is particularly helpful or it gives very good solution only for fluid flow problem why not on heat transfer or structural problem sir in heat transfer and structural problem the discretization pattern is uh, uh, it, it, it is not aligned Ah, uh, you can whatever the thing you want, you can do the discretization. Either you can go for a one-dimensional element if the problem is of one-dimensional problem. You can go for a two-dimensional element when you when you are doing something on two-dimensional like plane space, plane strain condition. Well, we are not talking anything about the thickness direction. We take only the surface. And when you go for this volume, you are going for the three-dimensional element. When you go for this finite difference method, it is like a we we have to play only with the two-dimensional geometry. like a graph sheet for an example if you take a graph sheet so each uh, the uh, the square size of the, uh, the the size of the square available in the graph sheet is of 1 cm and the other small small square which is available in a big square is of 1 mm so the discretization pattern is like a structured mesh that i will show yeah uh, the thing the structured mesh see this is a slide which highlights how the discretization pattern is carried out in a finite difference method you see it is like a graph sheet where x axis represent the same x and uh, uh, each increment is indicated by a increment of uh, delta x and the y directions we have delta t so you see it is like a structured at the center the discretization pattern is starting at the center and moves to the periphery so the center node indicates i comma j when you are moving along the x direction uh, it gets a increment in the i the, that is of i plus 1 i i am i is getting the increment value of plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 like that when you are moving along the x axis 
and when you are moving along the negative x we are getting the decrement value of i that is of i minus 1 i minus 2 i minus 3 and when you are moving along the y direction you see it is of i uh, comma j plus 1 j is getting the increment value of j plus 1 j plus 2 j plus 3 and when we are moving along the negative direction j minus 1 j minus 2 sir why you are speaking something on this sir what is the main advantage of uh, finite difference method the discretization pattern is like a structured mesh it is starting from the center and moving and moves towards the periphery sir why it is giving better solution for a fluid flow problem compared with the finite element method so the fluid flow normally the fluid is flowing inside a pipe that is of uniform geometry so if we take the uniform geometry the the pipe the, the pipe so if we take the cross section of the pipe it is a circle so if we take uh, the and also the velocity pattern if you want to find out the velocity distribution uh, in the flow so you, you you can see you can understand that the velocity at the center is very high when you uh, when when you are moving from center to the periphery the sir velocity is varies from uh, uh, center to the periphery correct so the distribution of velocity so velocity is very high at the center and at the periphery you can see only a very minimum value compared to the center so the pattern the the field variable the variation of the field variable itself is such a way that it is concentrating at the center when you are moving periphery you are getting a very minimum we are we are giving we are, we are focusing in a very Uh, the attention is very very less compared to the center so the pattern of the discretization in finite difference method in such a way that it is giving more attraction at the center and when you are moving further apart that is when you are going for the periphery you are having a less concentration so that's why this finite difference method holds good for a problem where the geometry of the domain is parallel to the discretization pattern you see if you take a circle this is a structured one There is no change in the cross section, and also this problem, this finite element, finite difference method holds good for a problem, a yeah, problem where the domain in such a way that it is oriented in a regular fashion, like the the boundary it should be parallel to the discretization, a uh, uh, discretization pattern. See if we put a graph sheet on the pipe, maybe on the top view or on the cross sectional view. the boundary of the pipe is parallel to the mesh so in such a cases you can get the solution of the problem so how you are getting the solution of the problem wherever you are putting out the node that node indicates that you want to find out the value of the particular node where you are going to encrypted on the uh, discretization see here it is like a structured mess the concentration at the center and you are focusing mainly at the center and you are moving towards the periphery so if the geometry is parallel to the discretization pattern this finite difference method gives a better solution compared to the finite element method that's why when you go for the fluid flow problem the geometry of the domain is regular domain and it is parallel to the discretization pattern that's why we are getting a better solution better solution means we are getting a Uh, approximate solution very close to the exact solution of the problem sir so what is the difference between the approximate solution and exact solution for example if you take a cantilever beam and you know a cantilever beam on one end of the beam is fixed another end you are going to apply a load and uh, if for example after applying the load you are getting a deflection of around y is equal to 100 what is the approximate solution when you are using this type of approximation technique you can get only the approximate solution what how how close you are getting the exact solution of the problem see if you get y is equal to 99.9 that is not the exact solution but it is only the approximate solution but the approximate solution is very close to the exact solution of the problem so this is a structural problem where you can either use a finite difference method or a finite element method or a boundary element whatever may be the method you can adapt but how close you are getting out the solution that is the main advantage of applying this type of a numerical technique so what is the main advantage in finite difference method if the boundary is parallel if the boundary is uniform then you can use this finite difference method by using the uh, difference equation like a forward difference equation backward difference equation and general difference equation for finding out the unknown parameter maybe a velocity or maybe something whatever the thing you want the gradient whatever you want in the fluid flow you can use this finite difference method 
I am not getting more depth into the finite finite difference method because my duty uh, is to highlight what is that finite element method, sir. Uh, because when I want to give more emphasis to the finite element method, I want to give a, what about the drawbacks in the finite difference method? As far as the finite difference method, if the domain is not, uh, if the boundary is not parallel to the discretization pattern, you are not getting the approximate solution, very close to the exact solution of the problem. So what is that finite volume method? So far uh, in finite difference method, we discussed only the uh, two-dimensional view. So if a geometry is of only of two-dimensional, I am not talking anything about the exact direction, then you can use the finite difference method. Sir, my domain is of uh, is of three-dimensional entity. So in that case, you can use the finite volume method where you have x, y, and z. With the help of finite element method, finite volume method, especially for a free problem, you can find out the unknown parameter. And the boundary element method and all other techniques where you can find only the unknown parameter, variation of unknown parameter only on the boundary. And uh, uh, now, what is the use of finite element method? Sir, finite element method attracts good, holds good for most of the problem. Even you can get a solution in free flow, but comparatively with finite difference method, it gives less attention in the uh, among the engineers who are working in fluid flow, right? especially uh, on uh, CFD, like the uh, sort of things, uh, computational fluid dynamics. So the persons working more on the fluid flow, they are using only on finite volume method and finite difference method because they are working only on the regular geometry, not on the irregular domain. Okay. Sir, so the finite element method. Sir, so before getting to the finite element method, this is also coming under the approximation technique. I could remember I asked you. What is that by approximation technique? Sir, so for example, if you take e power x, you know uh, the Maclaurin series, correct? So if you take the Maclaurin series, uh, e power x, uh, if you take e power x, how to expand it? If you expand the e power x, so what is that? 1 plus x divided by 1 factorial and uh, 1 factorial plus x square divided by 2 factorial it is going on like this until you are getting out the value of uh, plus x power n divided by n factorial so it is like a infinite forms you can extend it or if you can use your uh, uh, mathematical this one uh, computer to write code on matlab if you assign the value of x is equal to 0.5 or 0.6 and all you can get some value something on 100 for example if we take 155.0000 something 156.2233 like that so it is uh, it is going on there is no end for that expansion correct sir but uh, if you if if you want to find out uh, so you have to write out to x power infinity divided by infinity factorial so when we want to complete that run when we want to get the solution for this problem in such a case, what we are going to do, so we are truncating this mathematical procedure. We'll take only first three terms or four terms or five terms according to our solution, according to need of the solution, according to the need of the solution. And we'll take only three or four terms or five terms, even 10 terms or 50 terms. And we are truncating the mathematical procedure. See. So we'll take only the five terms, then you'll not get the exact solution of the problem. We'll get only the approximate solution of the problem because you are truncating the mathematical procedure. I repeat, e power x is the Maclaurin series. The Maclaurin series for e power x is of 1 plus x factorial x divided by 1 factorial plus x squared by 2 factorial like that. So it goes up to infinity, x, in, x power infinity divided by infinity factorial. But getting out all the factors, all the things, it's very, very difficult to get the solution for that. To obtain the solution for this problem, we'll take first three terms or four terms or six terms according to our wish. We'll select only the terms and we are truncating the mathematical procedure to find out the solution for this problem. For example, uh, during your lecture time, if you take uh, e power 0.5, 1 plus 0.5 divided by e, 1 factorial plus uh, uh, 0.5 divided by 2 factorial like that. La. So uh, 0.5 square divided by 2 factorial like that it is going on. 0.5 
power infinity divided by infinity factorial. Sir, I am going to take only three terms. First of three terms, I am compiling it in the MATLAB or in a normal calculator and finding out the solution. Now, fourth term, fifth term. If I am adding out the terms, you are getting the refinement of the solution. Correct? So, one time, you are truncating the mathematical procedure to attain the solution. For example, e power 0.5, the value is something around 120. But uh, when you are truncating the mathematical procedures, you are getting very close to the exact solution, maybe 116.5. Or if you take sixth term, it may be 117.25. If you take the ninth term, up to ninth term, if you are considering the Mecker series, then you are getting very close, 119.2. The exact solution is of 120. Sir, what we are doing now, we are truncating the mathematical procedure to find out the finding out the solution of the problem. The solution what I am getting is only the approximating solution is not only is not the exact solution of the problem. Correct? See, why bad the term the, this term arises in the uh, in the dictionary of finite element method? Sir, the error created by truncating the mathematical procedure is called truncating error. Sir, I repeat, the error created by truncating the mathematical procedure is called truncating error or the truncation error. Sir, truncating is a, it is not the normal usage used in the day-to-day -day life of finite element method. So instead of truncating, I can use the word. It's very, very more appropriate to this definition is of approximating. Sir, error created by approximating the mathematical procedure is called approximating error. That solution, what I'm getting is called the approximating solution. So that's why we are calling these numerical methods will do only the approximate solution of the problem. It will not give the exact solution of the problem but the approximate solution is very very close to the exact solution of the problem sir when you go for this application most of the researchers are working on finite element analysis either they are using on ansys package or abacus package or console whatever may be the packages they are using they are validating the results why they are validating the results their simulated results will give only the approximation to want to validate it, you have to do the experimental and find out the feasibility of the uh, solutions, what you are getting out from the uh, simulation and they are comparing the simulated results to the experimental for validation to find out the error percentage because we are, we are getting only the approximate solution because we are using only the numerical approximation technique. Okay, sir. Another example for this. Sir, you know something about the calculus, uh, f dash of x, correct? When you want to go for the calculus, it is of f dash of x. So f dash of x is equal to, what is that? If you take the f dash of x, it is of uh, limit uh, delta, delta x tends to 0, correct uh, sir? Delta x tends to 0, f of, f of x, f of, uh, x plus delta x. Sorry, friends, I am not having the uh, this pin and all. So uh, that is why I am using the uh, pointer for writing this equation. Sir, so f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. This is for the calculations. Correct? As for the differential calculus is concerned, f dash of x, the first order of uh, x, that is of uh, dy by dx, or uh, the first derivative of x. What is that? Uh, when uh, the limit x tends to 0, this is equal to limit x delta x tends to 0, f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. What is this equation uh, uh, pertains to give? So when delta x tends to 0, when it is close to 0, you can use this equation to find the f dash of x. But uh, when you go for this uh, differential thing, uh, what we are going to do, we are not going to put uh, we are not allowing the delta x tends to zero. We are uh, we are uh, we are putting we are incorporating we are assigning the value of delta x. That's why you see whatever may be the technique, uh, finite difference method or finite element method. This delta x, what I am highlighting here, what I am highlighting here, delta x is a small increment in the x direction. 
so we are assigning a small value to the delta x so you are giving an increment value to the x if x is equal to 1 delta x something is of 0.1 so x plus delta x is equal to 1 is uh, is converted to 1.1 so you are giving a value of 0.1 then 0.2 the uh, difference between the node nodes the distance between the two nodes is of delta x that is equal to 0.1 what we are doing as far as the differential calculus is concerned this is the equation that f dash of x is equal to limit delta x tends to 0 but we are not using that uh, delta x tends to 0 instead of that delta x is a finite number you are assigning the delta x as a small increment 0.1 or it may be a 0 0.01 or it may be a 0 0.02 it depends upon the element edge length uh, so when you go for the discretization pattern when you go for a one dimensional uh, thing or uh, what is the element edge length they will ask you what is the length of the element the length of the element is nothing but the delta x you are giving a small increment between the two nodes if x is equal to 1 then delta x is equal to 0.1 then x1 is equal to 1.1 you are giving a small increment value instead of delta x tends to 0 you are giving delta x as a finite number we are teaching delta x as a finite number so now you are converting this 0 to a finite number automatically it gives only the approximate solution this is approximately equal to f of f dash of x which is approximately equal to if we take this is not equal to this is approximately equal to instead of the limit the delta x tends to 0 we are simply writing as f of x plus f of x uh, f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x you are converting that infinite to a finite so this is tends to very close to zero it is not close to zero but you are assigning a finite number so this is only approximate equal to the f dash of x so this is for the differential equation first i took the mclaren series second i am taking the differential calculus third one we'll take the integration what is that integration if you take the integration i'll take the blank page so for example if you take the integration you know something when you when you take of uh, x is equal to uh, y is equal to f of x you are writing a function for y with respect to x when you are taking a uh, when you are writing a function for y with respect to x what is that mm. oh, one second so y is equal to here f of x you are writing a function for y with respect to x so if you want to draw a graph for this equation so this is of on the x axis this is f of x okay well, you take this this is of for the integration purpose y is equal to f of x you want to find out what is the area below the curve within the interval for example i am taking the interval of i want to find out the solution for this integral between the limit of a to b f of x dx what it means so you want to find out the area below the curve between the domain of a to b okay well, so if you could see this is of irregular thing and the area the area below this curve is very very difficult to find out the area below this curve because it is not a regular if it is a straight one from the rectangle you can find out length into breadth you can find out the area but this is of a curve uh, and you are this is the functional curve what is it y is equal to f of x sir this is you are writing this curve you want to find out the area below this curve how to find out this area below this curve sir what we can do a simple technique you can put known rectangles into this uh, area for example i am going for a discretization this one sir this is of known rectangle two rectangles are that third one and the fourth like that you can put known rectangles into this area and adding all the rectangles you will get the you will get the area below the curve it is only the approximate area it is not the exact area what you are going to develop or what you are going to obtain clear as that 
sir what what i am going to tell now sir the infinite uh, thing is convert infinite uh, rectangles you have to patch it inside to find out the area below the curve so instead of putting out the infinite a infinite rectangles i put only the finite rectangles and i am finding out the solution for this uh, problem what is the solution the area the area what i am obtaining by putting a finite rectangles inside and i am finding out the area that is not the exact area that is only the that is only the approximate area because i am putting only the finite rectangles not the infinite rectangles what i mean what i want to do what i want to emphasize here the thing is it is only the approximation technique why it is an approximation technique as far as the integration is concerned you are instead of putting out the infinite rectangles i will put only the finite rectangles to find out the area below this curve so first i took the maclaren series i am teaching you how to uh, find out the error so that error is called the approximating error the solution what i am obtaining is called the approximating solution sin i, I took uh, differential calculus the uh, approximation why it is approximation delta x tends to zero instead of making out the delta x tends to zero i am converting this infinite to a finite value 0.1 or 0.2 so that's why the solution what i am obtaining is of that approximate solution third one i took the integration in the integration i want to find out the area below the curve between the domain of a to b and i am putting only the finite rectangles in that and i am finding out the solution for this problem i am getting only the approximate solution because i have made only the finite rectangles in that instead of putting out the infinite rectangles infinite rectangles is converted to finite rectangles to find out the approximate area below this curve so because based on these things that i have proven in such a way that whatever the technique that we are following in numerical approximation technique i am using numerical approximation methods will give only the approximating solution not the finite solution of the problem that is not the exact solution of the problem <coughs> okay so now uh, i'll i'll get into that uh, one book uh, because it is very difficult for me to prepare the presentation uh, uh, because uh, last week only i heard the information that uh, uh, i'm going to give deliver a small thing in through webinar of uh, uh, for finite element analysis so that's why uh, i i have taken the book uh, and i showcase what are the things very very important to a finite element method what is the base for the evaluation of this finite element method Ah, uh, Dhirigran, this page is visible to you. Sir, yes, sir, visible, sir, visible, sir. Okay. So it is there. What are the things I have discussed uh, for the last twenty twenty five minutes? It is already available in this information. So now uh, another very very important technique I am going to speak is something about the variational approach. So in most of the books, if you could refer, it is very very difficult thing, and even in the open resources, I I got more. I, i got more of more uh, i get into most youtube videos uh, so it's very difficult to understand the variational approach uh. so today i am going to give uh, i am going to teach you a very very simple technique what do you mean by the variational approach so this is the base for uh, uh, this is the this is the basis for uh, many finite element formulation and it is having its own disadvantage we will see what are what about the advantage and what about the disadvantages of this variation approach simple thing sir and one more thing before get into the thing actual variation approach and this finite element method is not only the property of mechanical engineer who or maybe the engineer who or maybe working in different field they can use this finite element method for the research problem 
for example i am i'm going to take a two different discipline i'm going to give more emphasis to that uh, what i'm going to emphasis here now uh, it is not the property of a mechanical engineer it is a property of uh, of an engineer it is a property of an engineer like what we have in engineering drawing uh, it is a language of an engineer like uh, if, if if you are an instrumentation engineer if you are an electrical engineer you can readily use this finite element method for finding out the solution for that problem sir how is it first i'll take one heat transfer problem or maybe of mechanical engineering discipline second one is of uh, structural mechanics problem okay what well, is of strength of materials it is a it is a, a property of a civil engineer first is civil engineering discipline second one is of mechanical engineer first i, uh, I uh, during the initial stage of my discussion i have given an example of a heat conduction in a rod uh, q is equal to minus ka dt by dx uh, what do you mean by the ka by dx it is nothing but k is the connectivity is the cross section area and dt by dx is the temperature gradient sir when you go for this energy balance and all qx is equal to so when you are a heat transfer if you just refer the sachdeva book uh, uh, when you go for this energy uh, uh, energy uh, that is of energy balance uh, on left hand side as well as the right hand side after balancing you are getting the equation of uh, q uh, is equal to q conduction is equal to uh, ka d square t by dx square correct q is q conduction is equal to d is the ka k is thermal conductivity area of the cross section d square t by dx square where t is the temperature and x is the distance when you go for a one dimensional field so what is i repeat the equation q is equal to ka d square t by dx square this is the mechanical that is the thermal engineering next problem i am taking a one a simply supported beam you know simply supported beam one end is fixed and another is of a roller it will translate along the x direction when two concentrating moments are acting on the simply supported beam like uh, uh, i'll show this is the example if we take uh, this example the length of the simply supported beam is of h and two concentrating moments m not is acting on that beam and where e i is the flexural rigidity of the material e is the smallness of the material and i is the moment of inertia so two discipline so what is the governing differential equation for this problem e i d square y by dx square minus mx is equal to zero ah uh, same thing if we take mx is equal to e i d square y by dx square now i am going to fit the same equation with the heat transfer q is equal to m is replaced with the q and e i is replaced with the ka k is the thermal conductivity where e is the m smallness of the material both are pertaining to the material property i is the moment of inertia talking about the cross section area a is something about the cross section area of the uh, geometry area of the domain and d square t by dx square it is a heat transfer problem structural mechanics problem d square y by dx square y representing the displacement or deformation in heat transfer problem it is talking about t is the temperature sir when you when you compare these two equation there is a lot of similarity between these two equation like that you take any electrical problem uh, conducting wire if we take a resistance dq by dt is the flow of charge like that you can take whatever may be the governing equation of the physical problem you can compare with there is a lot of similarity between this equation i repeat ei d square y by dx square minus mx is equal to 0 that is for a simply supported beam act upon with two concentrated moments first problem second one is the heat transfer problem q is equal to minus that is of q is equal to ka d square t by dx square sir if you take these two similarity only variable is of when you go for a structural mechanics y is representing the deformation in heat transfer problem t is representing the temperature the unknown parameter what i want to find out by using this approximation technique it is of structural mechanics y the deformation or the deflection and t is the temperature in the heat transfer problem what i want to do if you could see this equation see the first page the fourth uh, page number 4 there is a one equation available at the bottom end when you go, when you when you are seeing that d is d into d square y by dx square plus q is equal to zero this is the generalized form if we could compare it 
this is a generalized form if you take the heat transfer problem d is getting the shape of ka y is getting the shape of t q is equal to q when you go for the heat transfer problem when you go for a structural mechanics problem d is getting the shape of ei what is that ei n small is and moment of inertia d square y by dx square y is representing the same y here y is nothing but the deformation where m of x is replaced by q here so if i could get the generalized form if i could develop a generalized form like what i am highlighting here d into d square y by dx square plus q is equal to 0 if i am creating a generalized form whatever may be the field problem what is a field problem heat transfer thermal electromechanical electrical so on so etc etc so whatever may be the whatever may be the field problem you can fit the field problem to this generalized equation and find out the unknown parameter that is the basis for developing this finite element formulation i think you can readily access into it and you can highlight and you can write a separate paper take a separate paper write all the equation put the generalized form what i am highlighting here d into d square y by dx square plus q is equal to 0 see this is the generalized form so this generalized equations one i am or once i am getting a convenient form in terms of matrix whatever may be the field problem i can put it in the field equations and i am finding out the field variable what is a field variable y in case of a structural mechanics problem what is a field variable in heat transfer temperature in case of heat transfer problem like when we go for electrical it may be a flow of charge q so these are all the field problem okay well. so now with this uh, main generalized form i am going to use the variational approach to find out the unknown coefficient unknown coefficient means is the uh, field variable why i want to find out the value of y by using the variational approach that is also coming under the numerical approximation technique see this variational method is also called integral formulation why is it is called integral formulation so we are converting this differential equation we are put the differential equation into the integration to finding out the unknown parameter before that i want to tell uh, what is the difference between differentiation and integration i think most of you are aware of that Uh, it is only for uh, people who is not aware of that the difference between differentiation and integration sir if what do you mean by the integration sir i don't know i i don't because my domain is irregular sir. i don't know the solution for the problem for this domain what i considered uh, for the as a physical problem sir but i know uh, by in the integration uh, i gave one example of a finite rectangles sir finite rectangles i know the area so once you add all the finite uh, rectangles then i can get the approximate area which is available below the curve same thing if i know the solution for a smaller domain available in a big part i know the solution for a sub domain so we have a big domains i am going to discretize into small small sub domains when you take a sub domains i know because it is a finite one it is of regular geometry it may be a rectangle or triangle or whatever may be the shape i know the value of this smaller portion then i can do the integration i can do the integration to find out the solution for the entire domain that is why we are going for integration if a small thing is available if smaller small portion is known to you then you can use the integration to find out the solution for the entire domain it is vice versa sir i know the entire domain i know the solution for the entire domain but i want to only a small portion a small element if we take a heat transfer if they are working in the heat transfer problems they are taking a very small element which is located at distance of x from the initial end the small thing is of dx when you go for a structural mechanics problem they want to find out what is a uh, what is the deformation in a tapering rod they take only a smaller portion dx which is situated at distance of x from the initial end so if you want to find out the solution for a smaller portion do differentiation and find out the solution so integration smaller portion is known if you want to go for the bigger thing go for integration sir entire thing is available with me i want only the smaller portion do the differentiation and find out the solution for the problem same thing the same approach i am going to use it for the variational formulation what i am going to do 
I am the, the governing differential equation for my field problem. What is that? d into d square y by dx square plus q is equal to zero with the boundary condition of it is also available in that uh, slide. If you could see that web page, this page, uh, what I am highlighting in the desktop with the boundary condition y of zero is equal to y not at x is equal to zero, y is equal to y not at x is equal to h, y is equal to y h. For example, if you take a, okay, a structural problem, if it is a simply supported beam, at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, because uh, there is no deflection at x is equal to 0. At y is equal to, uh, at x is equal to h, if the length of the uh, beam is of h, if you consider the length of the beam is of h, at x is equal to h, there is no deflection at uh, uh, h. So therefore, at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, at x is equal to h, y is equal to 0. So this is the essential boundary condition of a problem. Clear on. So this is the boundary condition to this governing differential equation of d into d square y by dx square plus q is equal to 0. Sir, what I am going to do, please listen my dear friends carefully. So now I will put this governing equation to the integral form which is available, which is, uh, it is highlighted above this equation. If you could see integral of 0 to h d by 2 dy by dx the square minus q into y they integrate with respect to dx to the domain of sir, zero sorry for, the, sorry for the interruption can you just zoom it sir if we go for zoom that will be available for us what what the name just you can uh, go for zoom operation so ah, you can okay. maximize it okay okay Yes, sir, sir. Please uh, drag and the correct portion. No, one second. Because uh, it is not equipped with the mouse. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. No problem, sir. Visible, sir. Huh? Visible, visible, sir. Oh, just yes. Okay, sir. Visible? Oh, uh, okay, sir. Oh, okay, sir. Visible, sir. Visible now? Yes, sir. Visible, visible. Go ahead, sir. Okay. So, if you could see this equation, uh, integration within the domains of 0 to h, d by 2, dy by dx, the square, whole square minus qy into dx. You please, my dear friends, you please listen this equation. You can see this equation. You can easily understand, sir. What I have converted, what I, what I, what I mean now. Thing is, this is a generalized form. D into d square y by dx square plus q. I am converting this generalized form to a integral formulation. The domain is already I have discussed. That. X is equal to zero. X is equal to zero. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now, x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. Why it is selecting? Now, see, at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. At x is x h, y is equal to 0. It is defined with the domain of 0 to h. And uh, this is equal to a uh, variable that is of uh, a numerical value pi. Uh, sir, what it means, uh, this one, this generalized form I converted into integral formulation. Sir, if you could listen this equation, the first portion is pertaining to the strain energy or if you can take it as a kinetic energy. You think uh, 1 by 2 m v square, v is something about the velocity dy by dx it is of rate of change of displacement dy by dx it is of v square and d is representing the m or if you take the strain energy principle sigma that is of uh, 
epsilon e into epsilon square divided by 2 epsilon means what is that du by dx change in displacement divided by the original length du by dx uh, change in length divided by the original length you can understand the meaning of this because it is working under the principle of minimum potential energy what is that the first term indicates the strain energy minus the work done sir i will tell what is the meaning of this minus sign sir work done what is it work done principle of virtual work what is that force into the displacement what is the force here q is the force because moment is the force q is the heat input so q into the displacement when you go for a structural mechanics problem y is getting the shape of displacement or the deformation q into y that is the equations i am writing out from this generalized form clear up sir this is that this is the generalized form i am converting this generalized form to a integral formulation especially for the variational approach in the variational approach what i am going to do potential energy please uh, write my dear friends potential total potential energy is equal to cap that inverted cap the strain energy i put in uh, i couldn't write this you can take a cap or whatever maybe the notation you can use it so to me uh, principle of potential that is a total potential energy is equal to strain energy minus work done that is of w w means it is of force into the displacement that is why it is indicated by a letters q into y and this is something about the strain energy is converted into a kinetic energy you know something about further kinetic energy is converted to a strain energy so for easy understanding you take 1 by 2 mv square v is representing dy by dx it is already that so the rate of change of displacement the whole square d is getting the shape of m that is a mass or if we take something about uh, the strain energy e into epsilon square divided by 2 epsilon square means what is that it is of du by dx u is uh, representing the displacement here it is represented by a letter y there is no change in the meaning only there is a change in the notation d by 2 dy by dx the whole square minus qy into dx which is equal to pi which is equal to pi means what is that pi pi is nothing but the total potential energy of the system it is given uh, it, uh, it is already given here it is a numerical value one numerical value pi is equal to this integration so after writing this integration what is the work we have to do to find out the unknown solution unknown parameter what is the unknown parameter here why is the unknown parameter because you know the mass of the body you know the material property e i and all you know the length of the body you know the heat input you know the force acting on the body everything only unknown parameter here is something about undetermined parameter what is that it is of y y means if it is a heat transfer problem it is temperature if it is a structural mechanics problem it is of deflection clear as it so now you the duty of this inter, uh, integral formulation or the variation approach to find out the unknown parameter c sir how to find out the unknown parameter it is another million dollar question sir it is coming and based on the experience how sir sir i teach you how to write uh, uh, a function uh, for solving this integral formulation sir now what i am going to do i am writing a function for y with respect to x see y is equal to f of x I am writing a function for y with respect to x. Y is equal to f of x. If I am writing a function, if I am substituting the value of y in this equation, all the terms are available only in x. So you can integrate it and within respect to the domain and you can find out the value of pi. Correct? Sir, when I am substituting y is equal to f of x, I am getting a numerical value of pi. For example, pi 1. For example, by one function, what I have given is of y is equal to f of x. Sir, second, I am writing another function for y with respect to x. That is what y is equal to g of x. I am writing a second function, y is equal to g of x. I am substituting out to this integral formulation. Integrated, I am getting out the value 
that value is equal to for example it is of pi 2 first y is equal to f of x i am getting a numerical value of pi 1 second function i am substituting is equal to y is equal to g of x i am getting a numerical value of pi 2 third i am writing y is equal to h of x i am writing a function for y with respect to x third function y is equal to h of x i am getting a numerical value of pi it is of pi 3 for example previous one pi 1 second one pi 2 third one pi 3 first function y is equal to f of x second function y is equal to g of x third function y is equal to h of x totally three function i have written for for y with respect to x i am getting a three numerical values pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 now what i am going to do i am going to compare the solution pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 i am going to compare the solution pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 which one is getting the minimum numerical value for example pi 2 is the minimum that corresponding function y is equal to g of x will satisfy this governing differential equation it is also called the approximate solution for that problem can you understand the point i repeat i repeat sir i am going to compare pi 1 pi 2 pi 3 for example take pi 1 is equal to sir uh, sir hello sir for that governing differential equation of d in d square d into d square y by dx square plus q is equal to 0 clear up sir how to write this trial function that is another question sir you have said that you are writing a function for y with respect to x y is equal to f of x y is equal to g of x y is equal to h of x Sir, how you are writing the function for y with respect to x? That is why you have to understand the behavior of the problem. See, if you could take the behavior of the problem, what is the behavior? If you take a simply supported beam, two concentrated moments are acting on the body. Sir, what happened to the deflection? If you, if the if the beam is deflected, you are getting a so you are getting a very big deflection at the center, correct? If the length of the beam is h, so at h by 2, you are getting a very high deformation very high deflection so the co pattern the shape of the co what you are getting a deflection pattern is of parabolic correct is of parabolic so then the function what you are writing y is equal to f of x that should follow the behavior of the curve pattern what is the curve pattern sir tell me an example for that function sir if i could take uh, y is equal to sin pi x by h pi x by h i repeat first function for example y is equal to sin pi x by h sin pi x by h please write my dear friends y is equal to sin pi x by h you see sine function all the sine function is of parabolic all the sine function is of parabolic that is the only condition no sir it should satisfy the function what I am writing should follow the curve pattern. Curve pattern means behavior of the field variable. If we take the deflection pattern of the simply supported B, it is of parabolic. So the trial function should be of parabolic in nature and also should satisfy the should satisfy the boundary condition of the problem. My dear friends, what is the boundary condition of the problem here? If we take the boundary condition, at x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. At x is equal to h, y is equal to 0. You please substitute in the trial function. y is equal to sin pi x by h. If you substitute x is equal to 0, sin 0 is equal to 0. y is equal to 0. If you substitute x is equal to h, h h will cancel sin pi x by h. h h will cancel, you get only sin pi 
y is equal to sin pi that is also zero sir how to write the trial function the first thing the trial function should follow the curve pattern behavior of the field variable second one what is that it should satisfy the essential boundary condition of the problem what is essential boundary condition here at x is equal to zero y is equal to zero at x is equal to get y is equal to zero the trial function what i gave here what i insisted here y is equal to sin pi x by h if you substitute the boundary condition it satisfied it satisfied both the boundary condition and it also follows the curve pattern that is that one trial function so like that you can write so many trial function yes you can write so many trial function example for this case if you take y is equal to y is equal to a into x square minus x h y is equal to please i write the thing y is equal to a into put the bracket put the bracket x square put the bracket x square minus x into h so this is another trial function you see x square x square means if we take y is equal to a x square minus a into x h what is that x square terms it will give only the parabolic curve so it follows the curve pattern second thing you substitute the boundary condition of the problem at x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 at x is equal to h y is equal to 0 so if we could put the boundary condition to this problem then it satisfied the boundary condition and it also follows the curve pattern so when you take when you consider the trial function the two important thing first it should follow the curve pattern second curve pattern of the behavior of the field variable and the curve pattern of the field variable uh, the second one it should satisfy the boundary condition so based on that we have to put n number of trial function to this integral formulation and find out the numerical value if you take the numerical value compare all the numerical value which uh, the numerical the least numerical value will have an additional property of satisfying the governing differential equation it is clearly given in this uh, uh, in this explanation you see the page number 5 the top paragraph given a differential equation an approximate solution can be obtained by substituting different trial function what is a different trial function y is equal to f of x y is equal to g of x y is equal to h of x into an approximate function that is integral formulation the trial function that gives the minimum value of pi is the approximate solution for the problem clear as sir so that is why you have to write number of trial function how to write the trial function it will come based on the experience try to learn more more number of problems write a different trial function you substitute the trial function and get the solution so i used another function called trial function the trial function is equivalent to the approximate function there is no difference between trial function and approximate function both are same clear up both gives the same meaning so trial function is also called trial function is also called trial approximate function so this is the way you are getting out the variational approach uh, this is also called integral formulation because you are using a integration to find out the solution of the problem okay ma and then if you uh, if you get more into it uh, if you want to get more insight to this variational formulation it is also called weak formulation it is not in weak form it is in strong form here normally if you use the integration as per the variational approach is concerned it is called weak form why it is weak form you if we could see if we could see the main uh, generalized form of this equation is in the second order see it is in the second order you are reducing the second order to the first order is because you see the equation what i am using in the integral formulation is of the first order so you are ready you are reducing from second order to first order that's why it is called weak formulation it is not a, a, there are two formulations are that strong formulation and weak formulation the directly if we take a differential equations if we apply the boundary condition these are all called strong formulation what do you mean by the weak formulation you are reducing the uh, second order equation to your first order equation 
so you are weak so this this conversion is called weak formulation and what is the main drawback for as far as the variational approach is concerned so don't worry about that variational approach it is also called the valley ritz method if you type raleigh ritz method in open sources it is also called variational formulation it is also called weak formulation it is also called integral formulation the main problem with the integral formulation is what is that sir if the second order equation is available in the governing differential equation you can convert as a first order but if the governing differential equation is of the first order then you are not supposed to use the variation approach to find out the approximate solution of the problem that is the main drawback of variation approach i repeat the main drawback of the variation approach is if the governing differential equation the generalized form what i am highlighting here if it is in the second order then i can reduce it i can weaken it and i can put it in the integral converting the second order equation to the first order and i can derive the solution for the problem but if the governing differential equation is in the first order you are not supposed to use the final daily method uh, variation approach to get the approximate solution of the problem that is the main drawback of a uh, uh, main drawback of the variation approach it is also available here if you could read the fifth page page number 5 the top uh, sentence the variation method is the basis for many finite element formulation but it has a major disadvantage it is not applicable to any differential equation containing a first derivative term if the first derivative term is available in generalized equation you are not supposed to use the variation formulation for finding out the approximate solution but the technique what the what followed in the variation approach it creates a basis for many finite element formulations that's why we are going for weighted residual approach okay, that's why we are going for weighted residual approach dinagaran dinagaran yes sir yes sir uh, how much time is remaining dinagaran sir actually we have uh, already we have crossed the timing but uh, shall we take another 20 minutes sir ah uh, 20 minutes sir. okay then uh, i summarize the weighted residual approach okay ma please please, uh, please. Uh, uh, participants sir uh, 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 please listen uh, actually covering uh, covering the fundamentals in one hour it is very tough so 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 this will be very good session to you please wait for another 20 minutes and learn the things please go ahead sir. okay uh, thank you uh, sir the thing is uh, uh, there is a drawback in variation approach then you go for an alternative methods to find out the approximate solution if it is, if the governing differential equation is of the first derivative okay now what about the next method uh, another beautiful methods are available please listen my dear friends if we take other uh, books it's very very difficult to understand the basics of weighted residual method now i'll tell the meaning of weighted residual method sir you know the generalized form d into d square y by dx square plus q is equal to 0 and you know the boundary condition of the problem now what i have so if you see this is the weighted residual approach so what i'm going to do uh, in the variation approach i am writing a different trial function i am substituted the trial function uh, the minimum value will give the actual property of satisfying the governing equation and uh, you can get the approximate solution it is very simple uh, i'll give another uh, simple example to you to understand the trial function you can take a one uh, two simultaneous equation c 2x plus 4y is equal to 20 3x plus uh, 7y is equal to 30 sir you want to find out the value of x and y if you if you if you put the simultaneous equation if you cross multiply and you can get the value of x and y but uh, if you are thinking as a god and if you put a number of value to x and y to find to equate x, uh, lhs and rhs that is called file function see first i am putting the value of 3 for x uh, and 4 for y 2 into 3 plus 3 uh, plus 3 into 4 and find out what is the lhs left hand side that is equal to the right hand side how close you are getting out the value so like that you are assuming some value and you are randomly putting the value in the simultaneous equation and find out the solution for x and y that is a simple example i repeat you take a simultaneous equation maybe x y and z or x y are only with x so before going for uh, equating and finding out the solution 
randomly you substituting the value of x and y that is called trial and error method you are substituting the value of x and y and finding out the value of x and y finally uh, by uh, by putting out the random value and equating the lhs and rhs once these two things are uh, uh, getting that same value then the corresponding x and y is the solution for the problem same thing i have made in the trial i have made in the uh, variational approach what i am going to do is the weighted residual approach i'll take only one trial function please listen my dear friends i am taking only one trial function this clearly mentioned here y is equal to h please see this uh, equation once again <clears throat> so please this uh, see this equation i am taking only one uh, trial function y is equal to h of x so trial function h of x means it should satisfy the behavior of the co pattern behavior of the field variable second one it should satisfy the essential boundary condition of the problem so this y y is equal to h of x satisfied both the condition so what i am going to do i am going to substitute the value of h of x for y in the generalized form see d into d square y by dx square plus q is equal to 0 sir what i am going to do i am substituting y is equal to h of x in this equation in this equation and if this y is equal to h of x satisfy the equation then that is the approximate solution of that problem correct if not if not then it will provide some residue that is of r of x that is also with respect to x correct because i am writing a function for y with respect to x if it satisfy the equation if it is satisfied the equation then this is the approximate solution if not the condition state if not then it is not equal to zero it will provide some residue sir what is that if you are putting a, a 300 is there sir what i am going to do i am going to divide this 300 divided by 7 uh, so if it is divisible then i am not getting any reminder but uh, if it is if it is not divisible i am getting a reminder i am getting a residue maybe 3 or 4 300 divided by 7 if it is 4 20 uh, maybe 6 is the reminder 6 is the residue cut off but uh, if it is divisible if 301 if you take a 301 instead of 300 if you take 301 and it is divided by 7 you are not getting the residue the value what you are obtaining is something about the solution for the problem cut off 301 divided by 7 what is that 4 if you take a 21 3 43 is the solution of the problem but if it is not divisible by 7 if the whole number is of 300 you are getting a residue that residue is something about 6 or 5 whatever may be the thing that is not equal to 0 that is the thing i am insisting here it is a function uh, function for y with respect to x the residue also is getting in terms of r of x it is not equal to zero my dear friends since y is equal to h of x does not satisfy the equation you are getting out the residue what i am going to do i am taking the residue i am giving more weightage to the residue by giving the multiplication factor w i of x and integrating over the domain what is the domain the governing equation boundary condition should not be you should not forget the boundary condition as well as the integration domain clear on integration interval sir what is the domain i am having zero to h r of x i am taking the r of x here and i am giving more weightage to the residue by putting a weightage factor of w i of x into r of x dx zero to h integrating with respect to the domain with respect to the interval zero to h and equal to zero what is that you have to minimize the residue to get the solution for this problem don't worry about these things my dear friends i'll just uh, uh, teach you the fundamentals pertaining to the weighted residual method i'll take one example problem and i'll teach you how to solve this problem only thing is i want to brush up the thing in a fast manner please listen carefully Sir, I am taking the residue, I am giving more weightage to the residue by multiplying a weighting factor 
that is also with respect to the x don't change with the, don't change with some other variable then you are not getting out the integration so integrate with respect to the limit 0 to h dx sir the residue r of x is multiplied by a rating function w i of x and the integral of the product is required to be zero sir how many waiting functions I want to multiply? The things are clearly given here. Now, number of waiting function equals the number of unknown coefficient in the approximate solution. Suppose that, sir, when I'm discussing the variational approach, I have used the trial function y is equal to a sine pi x, h, pi x by h, where a is the unknown coefficient. See, one person here, I'm using the word a. The second trial function I have considered y is equal to a into x square minus xh in the term also in the trial function also and using that uh, unknown coefficient a. So I have used only one unknown coefficient. So how many waiting function I have used? I have to use only one waiting function. See, we will go into that. So for selecting the waiting function, for selecting the waiting functions, we have so many techniques are available. That is well known to you, my dear friends. We have collocation method, we have subdomain method, we have Galakin's method, and the fourth one is the least to square method. See, I am I, I am going to teach each and everything uh, by giving more emphasis to the collocation, more, uh, more emphasis to the Galakin's method because this is a more popular method. This is a widest method. This is the more popular method, uh, and this is the only method where. All the final engineers are working with that. Okay, well, sir, we have in weighted residual method, we have four techniques. We have four methods. Why, sir? How to assign the weighting function for the function, for this integration? How to assign the weighting function for this integration? This integration, this weighted residual method is also called integral formulation. Why? Because we are using integration for finding out the unknown coefficient. Correct, sir? So this is also called integral formulation. Why is there four methods? These four methods will give an information on how to select the waiting function. Okay, well, sir, first one, collocation method. Sir, impulse function, don't worry about that. It is only a big term. Don't worry about that. You have to select a point. This collocation method is also called point collocation method. This collocation method is also called point collocation method where you have to select a point within the domain. What is it within the domain? You see, if the domain, if the interval is between zero to H, you have to select a point inside the interval, maybe H by two, maybe H by three, maybe H by four, whatever may be the thing, but it should come between the domain. Clear up? Uh, uh, what is that? You have to select a point within the domain that is why it is clearly mentioned here delta x minus xi sir uh, you uh, please don't worry about it if time permits i will take another session to you because del x minus xi means xi is that starting point of your starting point of your element starting point of the element x is something about inside the element that's why x minus xi Okay, well, so for example, if the starting point of the element is of zero and x, sorry, sorry, uh, if the starting point of the element, sorry, correct, if the starting point, if it is a node, starting point is of zero, that is xi, then you have to substitute the value of xi is equal to zero. What do you mean by the x? x is inside the element. Maybe the length of the element is of one mm, x is equal to maybe 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 minus zero, it is of 0 0.5 it will come inside the domain. That is why delta of x minus xi. xi is the initial point. That is the starting point of an element. Assume that it is of zero. x is that it is inside the element. It getting the value of inside the element. Maybe of x is equal to 0.6 or x is equal to 0.7. So 0.7 minus zero, you are getting out the 0.7. So how many points you have to select inside the domain? how many unknown coefficients are available in the trial function how that point should be selected as a point in the collocation method see my dear friends you have to select a point how many points you have to select how many coefficients are available 
find out see, see here we have only one unknown coefficient so if we have one unknown coefficient then we have to select the only one point in the interval see this selection the point selection in such a way that to requiring the residue this residue is there the r of x that residue should vanish at a specific point see you have to select a point within the domain how to select the point it should be lying inside the domain that point selected should make the residue to vanish over that point that is very very important here how many points selected sir the number of points selected equals the number of undetermined coefficient in the approximate function how many undetermined coefficient you see y is equal to a sin pi x by h we have only one undetermined coefficient so the point selected should be of only one point sir if i have two undetermined coefficients sir so tell me some example sir a sin pi x by h sir plus b of cos pi x by h sir a and b two undetermined coefficients sir in the trial function so the collection of points should be of two points maybe h by 2 and h by 6 so you select two different points inside the interval okay that is of the point collocation method third method that is a second method sub domain method i could understand you could understand the point simple thing how many undetermined coefficients sir first select the trial function how many undetermined coefficient sir i have only one undetermined coefficient select one point in the domain leave it that is for the collocation method it is also called point collocation method <coughs> sir second method is of the sub domain method what do you mean by sub domain so we have a domain sub domain so uh, that is a tree if you take the branch uh, if you take a uh, uh, domain it is a main thing you are uh, putting a small small boxes a main uh, a big rectangular box in a big rectangular box you are putting a small small boxes that is of sub domains each weighting function is selected as a unity what do you have to select in the sub domain method the weighting function what you have to select should be of 1 instead of w i of x replace with 1 1 into residue 1 into residue w i of x i of x is attain the value of 1 and over a specific region specific region means it is of 0 to h it is a interval 1 0 to h sir i couldn't understand the point please repeat it sir assign w of i of x is equal to 1 and 1 into residue residue and the integrate between the limits of 0 to h how many integration intervals sir sir how many integration intervals i want to do sir if i how many undetermined coefficients sir sir i have only one undetermined coefficient then consider the integration interval between 0 and h sir i have two integration intervals aha uh -huh. sir uh, sir i have two undetermined coefficients sir i have a and i have b then how many integration intervals i want to do take two integration intervals 0 to h by 2 h by 2 to h 0 to h by 2 h by 2 to h add these two to get the unknown coefficient value that is a a and b see i read this sentence please each weighting function is selected as unity w i of x is equal to 0 over a specific region specific regions means how many integration intervals you are going to select sir this is equal to requiring the integral of the residue to vanish over an interval of the region sir if i have how many integration intervals i have to select sir the number of integration intervals equals the number of undetermined coefficient in the approximate solution sir i have two integration i have two undetermined coefficients sir a sin pi x by h plus b cos pi x by h sir a b sir two integrate two undetermined coefficients sir then do the integration between two different limits 0 to h by 2 do the integration plus h by 2 to h sir i have three don't worry about that 0 to h by 3.333 plus h divided by h 3 h divided by 3.332 h divided by 6.66 plus h divided by 6.662 h so divide the integration intervals 
according to the number of undetermined coefficient in the approximate function clear on first one you have to select a point within the domain how many points selected how many undetermined coefficients are available select the number of points second one sub domain method sub domain from the name itself you are dividing the domain into sub domains okay va wow. how many sub domains for example if you take a six uh, divide into sub domains 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 so six ones are sub domains six is the main domain sir so, how many integration intervals you have to select first to select the waiting function as unity put wi of x is equal to 1 Find the trial function. How many undetermined coefficient? Sir, I have two undetermined uh, un undetermined coefficient in the approximate function. Two means divide the integration interval into two. Zero to h by two, h by two to h. That is of subdomain method. What is the Galakin's method, sir? What is the Galakin's method, sir? What is the Galakin's method? what is the galakin's method this galakin's method you have to select a waiting function as a trial function see in the trial function what is that you have a sin pi x by h remove the a consider the waiting function as a trial function take only sin of pi x by h as a trial function see see my dear friends please listen galakin's method use the same function for waiting function that was used in the approximate equation sir what is the trial function i am going to use it here trial function is also called approximating function sir a sin pi x by h is the trial function then remove the a take only the trigonometrical function sin pi x by h as a waiting function and multiply with the residue this w i of x is equal to the trial function remove the undetermined coefficient take the trial take the function which is available in the trial function uh, equate it to the waiting function and do the integration don't worry see i will take one example and i will explain all those things once again don't worry about that sir point collocation method select a point within the domain integrate it find out the solution sub domain method waiting function is equal to 1 do the integration select the integration interval according to the undetermined coefficient third one galakin's approach select the waiting function as a trial function what is the function which is available in the trial function c a sin pi x by h take only sin pi x by h remove the a and substitute in the waiting function and integrate over the domain 0 to h and do the integration find out the solution for that problem and the fourth method is the galakin's method sorry the first one is the collocation point collocation method sorry sub domain method third one galakin's approach fourth one is the least square method Ah, see, it is a least to square method. So first one we are taking as a point. Second one we are selected as a unity. Third one waiting function as a trial function. Fourth one least to square method. From the name itself, you can easily understand waiting function. Take the waiting function as a residue. So multiply residue into residue. You are getting a residue square. Clear? Ah, then please listen, my dear friends. What you have to assume here? Take the waiting function as a residue, r of x. R of x into r of x. You are getting out the r of x square and zero to h. You have to uh, integrate with respect to the domain zero to h. Instead of w i of x, you have to substitute r of x. R of x into r of x. You are getting out the r of x square. And sir, when you multiply the residue into residue, you are not going to equate to the zero because your residue is there, lah. the remaining term will be the error term er so you are not equate to the zero you have to equate to the error term because it is a residue it is a residue remaining okay va wow. it is a remainder so remainder into remainder you are getting another error term it is not equal to the zero remainder is not equal to the zero 
so that's why i am using that word i am using the letter er so integrate with respect to the domain 0 to h r of x the square and it is it is not equal to 0 you have to integrate with respect to dx with respect to the x and the equal to the error term okay wow. this error is minimized sir once you are getting out the error sir i am getting a 3 so you have to minimize the 3 in order to make it to 0 okay wow. 3 you have to suppress the 3 and you have to equate to 0 uh, to minimize the error and then equate to the 0 to get the solution don't worry you are not supposed to understand in this juncture so i will take one example and explain you don't worry about that now you understand the fundamentals alone sir residue into residue residue square and you have to integrate with respect to 0 to h and the term what you are getting is something on the right hand side or the left hand side is of the error term further you have to minimize the error term to find out the unknown coefficient in the approximate solution okay sir totally we have discussed the weighted residual method and the variational approach variational approach i repeat variational approach we have considered a different trial function substitute all the trial function which one is giving the minimum most numerical value of pi that trial function will act as an approximate solution for a governing differential equation what about the weighted residual approach so select the trial function that should satisfy the essential boundary condition should follow the curve pattern and select the trial function put it in the generalized form put it in the differential equation and equate to the zero and if you are not getting out the zero if it is not satisfied then it will create a residue that residue you have to multiply with the weighting function integrate over the domain of zero to h dx and equate to the zero how, how to how to create the weighting how to assign a value for the weighting function then we have four different methods are available first one is the point collocation method second one subdomain method third one galakin's approach fourth one is the least square approach sir first three approach you are equal to the zero if you could remember if you have written something in the paper uh, just recollect the thing integration zero to h w i of x r of x dx is equal to zero you are equating to the zero for the three things subdomain method uh, point collocation method galakin's approach not for the least square method now to for the c square method for the first three methods you are equal to the zero to find out the undetermined coefficient in the approximate solution but for the least square method you are not equal to the zero why because you are taking you are considering weighting function as a residue residue multiplied by residue you are getting another error term that is not equal to the zero okay friends okay so variational approach and weighted residual approach weighted residual method under weighted residual method we have four techniques for selecting a weighting function okay now i am going to take a one super example so what we discussed in the previous thing see this is the example i am going to create here i am going to I am going to teach here. Uh, see, this is the governing differential equation. This is a physical problem. So it is a simply supported beam. I think you all are aware of it because uh, whatever may be the discipline, you are aware of that simply supported beam. One end is fixed, another another one is of a roller. Two constant moments are acting on the beam. This is the governing differential equation of the uh, beam uh, 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 based on that uh, boundary conditions, based on the loading conditions. E i d square y by d x square minus m x is equal to 0. What about the boundary condition? You see, at x is equal to 0, at x is equal to 0, there is no deflection. At y is equal to 0, there is no deflection. So, what is the deflection pattern? I am going to trace the deflection pattern like this. So, this is the deflection pattern. At the center, you are getting a maximum deflection. So, the go pattern, what I am going to insist here is of a parabolic. So, select a trial function which will give a parabolic in nature. And also it should satisfy the governing differential equation. Correct? Ah, sorry. And also satisfy the boundary condition of the problem. See? And the uh, bending moment diagram is also given here. Now I am going to consider this problem. And I am going to find out what is the value of y by adapting different approaches. First one I am going to use the variational method. Second I am going to use the very weighted uh, residual method. But these are all coming under the approach of integral formulation. So now... Uh, another five minutes i'll wind up the section okay so y of x is equal to a sine pi x by h so far what i use this this is the trial function and the original solution of this problem is of 
y of x is equal to m not of x divided by 2 ei into x minus x h this is the exact solution of the problem now i am going to use a different numerical technique numerical approximation technique because i am going to truncating the mathematical procedure and i am going to find out only the approximate solution of the problem uh, what is the trial function i am going to utilize here is of y of x is equal to a sin pi x by h you know in the variation approach we are going to take a different trial function and i am going to find out the least value of pi from that you are going to select the trial function for understanding purpose for making out the um, explanation as so simple i am going to take only one trial function here y of x is equal to a sin pi x by h see this is the governing equation this is the this is the governing equation uh, this is the governing equation side by side you see as far as the the variation of which is concerned it is a weak formulation so you have to convert the second order derivative to a first order derivative and also i taught you uh, when you put it in the integration what is that it is having a term of uh, kinetic energy minus that is a strain energy minus work done sir I, at the time i forgot to tell why you have to use that minus sign because you know total potential energy is equal to strain energy plus work done this is that equation pi is equal to kappa inverted uh, v plus w inverted v plus w inverted v means it is a strain energy plus w w means work done i repeat potential energy pi is equal to strain energy plus work done i am using that uh, sign plus but work done is equal to load into displacement p into u but why it is converting to a minus but if i rewrite this equation pi is equal to inverted p inverted b minus p into u p is the load and u is the displacement why negative sir sir why i am introducing a negative sign here because work that is the load is loosening its capacity to do the work that's why i am using that word uh, using the sign negative p into u what is that load into displacement p is the load is loosening its capacity to do the displacement to do the work that's why i'm using the uh, using the sign negative now when i'm rewriting the equation capital pi is equal to strain energy cap minus minus p into u same form i am having here you see this is of the second order derivative it is in a weak form we are going to put it inside the uh integration sir and also what is the capability of the big form na you can usually do the integration and you can find out the solution but in a strong form doing the second order it takes some more time that's why we are converting a strong form into a weak form to do to get the solution as as early as possible strong form is somewhat cumbersome but weak form it is easily do it manually and you can extract the solution approximate solution from this problem okay now i am converting the governing equation ei d square y by dx square minus mx sir i said you have to convert this one into a first order you see same thing d by 2 d by 2 dy by dx the whole square same thing first or second order equation is converted into a first order there is a negative sign here the uh, in the equation itself it is a negative so negative negative becomes positive m not is that moment acting on that is a load load is creating the displacement y so negative is converted to a positive i am converting the generalized form of equation d do d into d square y by dx square plus q is equal to 0 q is equal to m x uh, y is equal to y here Yeah, d is equal to e a. E a means it is the flexural rigidity of the material. Length small s equal to the material property. Length small s of the material and i is the moment of inertia. Now, after converting this one in the integral formulation, what I am going to do? I have already I have the trial function y of x is equal to a sine by x by h. I am taking this one. I am going to differentiate with respect to x dy by dx. So automatically. Sine pi x by h we have converted into a cos pi x by h. We have the x pi x pi by h will come out. So a pi by h into cos pi x by h. It is a normal differentiation. After differentiation, you are going to substitute this differentiation dy by dx into this equation. 
same thing i have written here instead of why i am writing out a sin pi x by h into dx you do the integration it is some it will take some time it will take uh, it will take another two or three pages to do the derivation after finally after integrations you are end up with this values you segregate all the a square terms in one side a terms in another side put it in the bracket and make it out pi is equal to ei pi square divided by 4h into a square plus 2 into m not h divided by pi into a you are segregating all the terms with respect to a square and a which is equal to pi what is that sir if you could uh, if you could uh, recollect what i uh, what i emphasized in the initial part of the class sir you have to get the minimum value of pi if you want to get the minimum value of pi instead of going for a different trial function you can minimize it with respect to a what is it a it is of undetermined coefficient in the approximate function so that's why i am minimizing the pi with respect to the a so do pi by do a so after that you have to equate minimize it and equate to the zero so see do pi by do a i am partially differentiating with respect to a i am getting out this equation after equating to the zero i am getting the value of a so once i am getting the value of a we know the trial function what we have replaced is equal to y is equal to a sin pi x by h then i am finding out the value of a using the variational formulation substitute the value of a in the approximate solution this is the approximate solution of this equation you can easily compare this is the exact solution of the problem and this will give the approximate solution of the problem sir this is only with the parameters if you take the numerical value take length of the beam is of 100 mm take the x smallest into 2 into 10 power 5 newton per mm square take the moment of inertia assign all the values in the equation then compare what is the exact solution and what is the approximate solution derived using numerical approach okay so this is as far as the numerical variation is concerned okay it is called weak formulation now my second thing is of the variation uh, that is of uh, <coughs> second one is of the weighted residual method correct in the weighted residual method i have uh, in the weighted residual method first point is of the point collocation method clear up in the point collocation method what is that the collocation method we have the select a point inside the domain and the condition state that the residue should vanish at the particular point the residue should vanish at the particular point the number of points selected is equivalent to number of undetermined coefficient in the approximate function see i am taking the residue where i am taking the residue sir this one is of the differentiation we have given already given in the variational approach take dy by dx sir, to the differentiation twice to the differentiation twice it is that the governing equation is of ei d square y by dx square minus m of x is equal to 0 do the differentiation twice y is equal to a sin pi x by h to the differentiation first time second time second order i am going to cos first the sin is converted to cos once again cos is converted to the sin sin by putting a value of negative negative is that this is of residue d square y by dx square is of the equation you are substituting the d square y of in the governing in the general governing equation and how many points you have selected you select h by 2 sir why you are selecting at the mid level you can select h by 3 yes it is possible you can select h by 4 you can select h by 6 you can select h by 7 n number of things you can select but you have to select only one point either you can select h by 2 or h by 4 or h by 6 whatever may be the thing you can select as your wish but it should come between inside the domain here i have selected x is equal to h by 2 substitute the value of x is equal to h by 2 in this equation and find out the value of a after finding out the value of a you substitute in the trial function y is equal to a sin pi x by h substitute that this is the value i am getting this is the value i am getting uh, y is equal to uh, y, uh, a is equal to minus m not h square divided by ei pi square y of x is equal to substitute the value of a here and to find out the value instead of that you can select another point and substitute the value of uh, a different value of x and find out the approximate solution 
and you can compare after substituting the numerical value you can substitute the value and find out the solution okay and as far as the subdomain method is concerned you have to select the integration interval and select the waiting function as unity so here i have selected a waiting function as unity w i of x is equal to 1 0 to h r of x dx there is no w i of x instead of that i have equal to the 1 so 1 into r of x is equal to r of x how many integration interval i have to select only one integration interval because one i have only one undetermined coefficient a so 0 to h 0 to h substitute of r of x uh, which is equal to the 0 integrate it and find out the value of a after finding out the value of a substitute in the trial function y is equal to a sin pi x by h i repeat select w i of x is equal to 1 integration interval is of 0 to h if we have two integration intervals then 0 to h by 2 plus h by 2 h uh, equal to 0 then find out the value of a and b then uh, substitute the value of a and b in the trial function but i have only one trial function here i said i have only one determinant coefficient so find out the value of a substitute the a in the trial function and third one is the galakins approach so galakins approach what is that the trial function the function what you consider in the trial function set as a waiting function sin pi x by h so substitute in the residue integrate the integrate the entire thing and which is equal to the zero because subdomain point collocation and galakins method are concerned everything is equal to the zero only least square method it is equal to the error term not equal to the zero which is equal to the zero integration integrated after that you find out the value of a because we have only one unknown coefficient here and it is equal to zero find out the value of a y of x is equal to substitute the value of a in the galakins approach clear and what happened to the least square residue into residue residue square already residue is uh, multiplied here so you have the residue take the this is the term this is the residue so residue into residue residue square so which is equal to zero it is not equal to zero because it is a error term residue into residue you can get the only the residue it is an error term Uh, integrated with respect to the domain we have er and you have to suppress the er and equate to the zero with respect to the undetermined coefficient do of er divided by do a and equate to the zero <coughs> and equate to the zero so after solving of a we'll get the solution a see if you could compare the solution totally five solutions are there five approximate solution if you could compare least square galakins method and the variational approach will give the same solution however subdomain method point collocation method will give a different thing that's why popularly galakins method and variational approach are popular among the engineers least square methods are also popular but the difficulty here you have to take the square do the integration and you have to once again minimizing it because of this mathematical procedure is not so popular even though it is popular but compared to galakins approach and variational approach this least square method is not so so popular among the engineers to get the approximate solution okay so why it is approximate solution you are truncating the procedure and you are finding out the solution of the problem so that's why we are using the numerical approximation solution technique to find the approximate solution because if the domain is of irregular if it is of different materials and if it is of anisotropic property there is some technique is necessary in the world to get the approximate solution of the problem okay so i think uh, i have covered the basic fundamental pertaining to uh, pertaining to uh, this uh, uh, finite element method uh, so i think if you want if you uh, if you want to ask anything to me uh, if you, uh, if you have any queries please post a mail uh, because i already gave my mail id in the first page itself uh, i have prepared so many things are that because uh, time is not sufficient for me to cover the entire thing so it may be i open up to you uh, so with this base you can build your bungalow pakka house kucha house whatever may be the one thing you want you can build it thank you friends uh, sir thank you so much for a wonderful session uh, 
uh, we are getting a very uh, positive response from all the participants and uh, actually it is not easy to cover the entire fundamental within the simulated time but however you have done a very good job and uh, most probably so this will be very useful and even though i am handling the fa for past 10 years i got a, uh, so many things from you so the very good explanation given by you on uh, differentiating the song formulation big formulation which will not be available in any any other books so i think sir please can you share the title of the title and author of the book to the participants ah uh, it is of uh, larry segerland applied finite element analysis by segerland s e g e r l i n d uh, sir if it possible to share the book to the participants from our side uh, ebook yes 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 i think i already uh, uh, sent a copy to your email you yes, can you could share the presentation because uh, the presentation what i have made is of self explanatory okay. uh, that you can also share the uh, ppt and as well as uh, one video and another one pdf file you can share the these three files to the participants okay okay uh, participant as sir said i will uh, i will email the all books uh, the presentation and the video to you and this will be uh, available for all the participants those who attended the session and now Uh, what we will do we will share a link to you through your my email uh, upon clicking the link you will be asked some few questions which, which are very easy questions and uh, by submitting that you will directly get your e certificates okay so i will be uh, sending the mail to you as soon as possible within dinagan uh, i am dinagan i am leaving the meeting because i am having another meeting uh, please sir uh, please shall sir. i leave shall i leave yes sir please sir thank you so much sir. thank please, you thank sir. you thank you Thank you, participants. Uh, I think you had a good lecture. I think you enjoyed the presentation. Thanks a lot. Keep in touch with me. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Please, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, dear participants, actually, as you have requested in the uh, chat box, so we have planned to conduct series of lectures. So we are going to conduct the lecture on, on on three series. One is uh, technical lectures. So like uh, that, the, that will be on curriculum based. like fe engineering mechanics and the material and like that lectures we are uh, uh, we will be conducting in forthcoming days and as well as for the faculties so we are planning to conduct on the lecture on research series so research how to do research and how to publish in a very good quality journals and how to write a uh, winning proposals so that type of series also have been, have been planned and thirdly we have planned to conduct uh, uh, lectures on uh, industry talks so we we plan to call the industry experts and they will be giving their lectures so that will be on industry series so these three series we have planned and hope so you will get the uh, uh, announcement soon okay and i thank you all uh, for your uh, wonderful time and i hope the session uh, from the sessions you might have learned something and those who already know known who known the uh, final element final element analysis might have got a chance to enhance their knowledge in fundamentals so thank you so much now as i said earlier i will be sending a link to your uh, mail so upon filling the link your certificate will be directly issued to your emails so thank you so much and i want to share another one thing also now uh, we are uh, there is another one session on career guidance so let me share the link through the chat box and uh, 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 this is the uh, link so those who want to uh, refer your uh, words or your friends to get the career guidance you can you can forward them to attend this session thank you thank you so much thank you bye and uh, and i want to say one thing so this session will uh, will be available as a video in youtube let me share that video link also to you thank you thank you so much